Larry, you yes. have to yes. regulate okay. things, right. or we're never going to get through. Yeah, really. right. It's okay. It's under control. Listen, people. First of all, <laughs> this is tremendously complicated, and we all have the world of facts and different facts. It's going to take a while to put it together. We've got to somehow reduce it. We've got to move on. We have to listen to Creek, and then we're going to have this wide open discussion. So uh, let's move on. Yes, Linda? Can I just ask people to identify themselves before they speak? Yes, please identify yourself. And if you want to say where your connection is to what's going on, but that's going to be after we have to listen to you first and see what uh, we want to know that you aren't familiar uh, to the sense of what the farm is, because that's what provoked all of this. continue the heritage of the land uh, as it's been a farm heritage for, for all this time. So we want mostly to get people down there interacting with the agriculture through a variety of different multi-artistic ways and educational programs and workshops and farming training. Historically, uh, Dan Gunther on the right and Jerome Smiley on the left were the founders and their basic premise in starting the farm uh, from one end was to provide produce that wasn't coming from thousands of miles across the country, but to get something going locally. And also, Dan Gunther has a strong drive to make it sustainable food, growing it sustainably and connecting it to SUNY New Paltz. This was to be SUNY New Paltz's farm. We've carried on that heritage. The organization has carried on that heritage for 10 years and still is exhibited in the way we're farming it today. Um, some of the land that we, the infrastructure that we've developed, I mean, these are our, our growing fields, but you can see 6,500 yards of organic material have been added. So what was once a spent hay field is now a fertile growing zone for vegetables. Um, and we also practice other sustainable techniques. We have a whole acre of Three Sisters Garden, traditional Native American method that's crop interplanting. We also do, uh, we're making inroads into having a no-till system, which means you're not turning over and disrupting all the, the whole soil community every year. Um, the other infrastructure that we've added has included, uh, we meaning the Brook Farm Project organization, has um, been electric fencing, which is for both keeping livestock uh, and in and predators out, and an irrigation system. And just this year, we added a new uh, 40, so, 40 or so foot seedling uh, greenhouse. Um, that's the house, which has been greatly improved since the Brook Farm project started 10 years ago. It was basically gutted and renovated uh, early on, and now even though it's an old farmhouse, it's very comfortable and cozy, and you can kind of get a sense of that from the interior. And this house, even though the farm crew lives in it, it's also the community's house. We have programs in there going on every week, community meetings and programs. Um, uh, that's some of the other infrastructure on the farm. I think that's all I'll say about that. Uh, a main wonderful thing about having a farm right outside of town is that you've got access to sustainable, healthy, delicious produce uh, right there. And that's um, one of the founding principles, was to provide local produce for everyone. Uh, so you can kind of see our, our CSA distribution pickups. is always full of little socials or people singing or playing checkers. Um, this is just a, a scene from one of our CSA distributions. Um, a big part of the farm is uh, kind of raising the local farming community too. So there's a lot of farmer training going on. These are all young folks who have come to the farm for various reasons, partly for farmer training and also just for, I think, the sense of community that has built up based on the local 
participation uh, in what's going on and feeling like a strong sense of mission that they're doing something good for the world. And it is uh, a joyful place. Um, I guess this is more scenes from our oh, CSA distribution and also uh, our farm stand in town at the bakery. Uh, I'm not really sure. I have nothing else to say. <laughs> uh, here's an example of some of the, these are all uh, SUNY students and other college students that have come. Uh, I think the group on the right, was, uh, lower right, was the Yale Harvest, the freshman orientation. Uh, and then uh, SUNY Oxfam, the lower left, and just a variety of work parties that are really getting students and others engaged in actually learning sustainable agriculture. Um, this just shows uh, some of our education programs and research that's going on. The lower left is a student at SUNY this year who's doing a scientific comparison between no-till and conventional agriculture with their professor Eric Healy. Um, and there's a variety of other student scenarios going on there. Um, another big part of the way that we're trying to do farming is to bring the community to the land for public harvest festivals. So this is a photo from our uh, Thanks to the Maples Festival with uh, Earth, uh, Wild Earth. And our, um, there's a maypole dance going on there on the right. We had a blueberry festival in March. We had a blueberry festival in uh, August. And then our upcoming one on October 5th and 6th is a music and harvest festival, local food and music, and Pete Seeger will be playing at the bar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This weekend. Uh, right. Yeah. There's some more of the education programs, and I really want to stress that these are, uh, you know, there's a whole diversity of community groups that comes to the farm, from teenagers with special needs to uh, elementary ESL students, that's English as a second language, to uh, different school groups from both private and public schools. Um, we're really trying to make a place where the whole community will be learning and taking part in their agriculture. Um, Besides the community participation, it's really steeped in the arts, the way that we're farming, especially music and dancing. We have a monthly, approximately, farmhouse concert, and that's David Burns and his son. David's a, a Grammy winner. Uh, that's a music jam on the right, which is every month on the first Sunday, and everyone is welcome, and it's free. And then the lower picture, that's uh, one of the monthly bond dances that we have. So you can experience all of that on October 5th and 6th, because each of those things is happening to some degree. Um, uh, finally, <laughs> our slogan, come sit at our welcome table, is meant to let everybody know in one little phrase that you are welcome to come and participate in this, in this project. And that, again, we hope that this is um, giving the land back to the community for maximum good. That's our goal. Thanks for listening. Um, the farm also did really well financially this year. Um, we had a lot of different marketing animals. I'm Lisa, I'm Chris partner. And um, between a farm stand in um, downtown, I'm outside of the bakery, between a Houston Farmer's Market, a SUNY Farmer's Market, and um, our CSA, we broke even this year. And that's tremendous for a farmer's first year trying to take care of that land. why I'm here and I feel <laughs> my name is Lori Gross and I'm so glad to see you all here and um, I um, joined the Friends of Brook Farm group because of what I just said. I, Creek has brought um, an absolutely magical amount of spirit to this project and to this land and to this community and he just draws people in. Um, so I just felt like I have been—I have been a member of many other CSAs in the past, but what what um, is happening here is really unique and really valuable, and um, and I'm—I just feel honored to be a part of it, and I hope and pray that all of us will find a way to work together as a community 
to keep it going long into the future and find like a win-win situation for everybody concerned. And I think we can do it. We're smart. We have good, you know, vibes going. And I feel like it's, it's really critical that we take our responsibility as members of the community to make sure that even when like the good guy kind of organizations, when they're not behaving well, it's up to us to make sure that they kind of get with the program. And that's, that's why I'm here. So thank you all for coming. And at this point, are we going to go into the... Um, well, uh, yeah, let me say just a few summary from uh, uh, Simpsons. Uh, what our position is, if you look again at the relationship of the Mountain House, which is a for-profit organization, and the Preserve, which is not, is that the relationship is very, very intimate. For example, guests at the Mountain House have access as part of their daily, whatever they're staying there, to the whole Preserve, whereas the rest of us pay. If they put in the, the gatehouse, and that's the old road up to the mountain house, the old carriage uh, road. And where is that going? That's going to lead up, and I don't know how it ends, but it's certainly going to fit in with the ongoing network of carriage roads all around the preserve and up to the house. The point is there's an intimate relationship, and the prosperity of the mountain house depends then upon the financial support of the community, the moral support of the community, and the political support of the community. What we want, those of us who have expressed ourselves financially in terms of loyalty, is we want the same from the Mountain House, from the Preserve, from OSI. We want them to regard us as partners, as people who have a say, people who have a standing in the running of this and in decisions that are made for it. Our simplest demand is that they renew the lease for Brook Farm, and we can proceed from there. Okay. Uh, yes. Sorry. I just want to go over a couple of thoughts to underscore them. Please stand up. Please stand up. Please stand up. Please Okay, good evening, folks. My name is Erwin Skerber. Um, I teach at SUNY New Quartz, and I'm uh, very concerned about <coughs> environmental policy and public health. And that was how I got joined into this uh, whole uh, issue, even though I don't live immediately in the uh, vicinity of anything that OSI has its, has its crosshairs on. Uh, uh, starting about a year ago, I began to hear rumblings uh, in town and sometimes uh, at the college, uh, uh, sort of little red flags going up uh, to the effect that uh, this um, organic farm, Brook Farm, which uh, as of about a year ago I knew only little about except through reputation, that it was going to be evicted, shut down, and that uh, one of the big greens, in this case, uh, OSI uh, slash uh, uh, Glenwood Center, were uh, uh, making that kind of decision. And this caused me a great deal of uh, concern because uh, since I moved here in the 1970s, I had always had very high regard for uh, the uh, access of uh, people in the community to Mohonk and uh, also to Minnewaska State Park. To me, all this represented uh, a, uh, a true uh, uh, public uh, good, a, a, a blessing, a, a public health resource, a uh, benefit to uh, the, the, the wildlife, the flora and the fauna in the area. And so uh, concretely, when I hear about an organic farm that is uh, being uh, targeted for uh, uh, eviction by a, uh, an organization, or in this case, a, a couple of organizations partnering uh, to uh, 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 set up what they uh, plan to call uh, their own version of a f uh, farms or, or incubators, I get very nervous because, uh, uh, you know, you, you, you don't save a village by bombing it to hell, and you don't mm -hmm. save uh, the uh, principle of organic farming by shutting down uh, a truly uh, effective, exemplary uh, farm that's already uh, doing a lot of good in terms of providing uh, healthy uh, 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 produce and also uh, providing education for people who want to learn about farming as interns and for community people who want to learn more and more about organic farming, which is really the way that we here in the Mid-Hudson are going. 
So, to make a long story uh, uh, very short, I, I thought I would give you just a, a rough idea of one little sign of the times as to the absence of dialogue between those of us concerned about uh, 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 saving Brook Farm on the one hand and the Open Space Institute and Glenwood Center on the other hand. And that has to do with this issue of ownership versus stewardship. Uh, Larry Bagendike already uh, made some reference to it. I just want to be as explicit as possible, and I hope I don't sound like I'm giving you an academic lecture about it, but the fact is there's a profound distinction here. An owner of property can uh, kick people off it if he or she wants to because they're not paying rent or because they have bad health habits or they're smoking dope on the property and on and on and on. However, a steward of the property, which is what OSI and, and Glenwood uh, really are because of their uh, tax exempt uh, uh, status and the conservation easements, a steward of the property has to be devoted as well to the public good, the public interest, and they have to adhere to their mission statement, which includes the principle of community empowerment. Now, uh, when it comes to the question of community empowerment, I took the liberty of bringing with me a little show and tell uh, 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 example of what empowerment is not. <laughs> what you have here are some of the folks who uh, went to a, uh, a, a Glenwood Center uh, ceremony uh, with their uh, signs, and you should all take a look. You know, these are not Al Qaeda <coughs> terrorists. These are your basic, normal people exercising their civil liberties of uh, 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 public demonstration and uh, uh, petitioning to redress grievances. They are exercising perfectly normal and customary rights under our Constitution for freedom of assembly. And what does the, uh, 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 the, the, the uh, leadership, the uh, director of Goodwood Center do about all this? Well, here's what happens. Where is it? Here it is. <laughs> They thought that uh, this is the thing to do. You call out the police. Okay? Now, this is not my idea of community empowerment. I, I don't know what they intend to do about us here at this meeting. Uh, if only a, a, a handful of folks, I don't know, maybe there were five or ten people there. I wasn't present. But if, if, if the, uh, the uh, illustrious leadership of, of these uh, organizations thinks that five or ten people who are concerned citizens uh, should be uh, the object of police arrest. I don't know what they're going to do with us. Maybe they're going to call Homeland Security in. Maybe they'll call in the United Nations SWAT team. I don't know what they'll do. I really have no idea. There's a certain amount of uh, pathology in this. And as you heard from the other speakers, the, the, the leadership of these organizations may well have good intentions. I personally think that is very likely the case. But they need to be culturally re-educated and rehabilitated about some of their priorities about what community empowerment means. It doesn't mean that you show up communication and it doesn't mean that you uh, uh, view them as the enemy. That's not dialogue. And uh, uh, last but not least, I just want to uh, let you know that if we all stick together, because there are a lot of different kinds of constituencies here. There are homeowners concerned about uh, unjust uh, uh, raising of their taxes, their concerns need to be uh, 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 cooperatively and constructively addressed. There are people here who have a, a, a strong devotion to the uh, very fine cause of organic farming. They have a, a right to be addressed. And there are other people who are sometimes here and there actually facing uh, uh, so-called adverse trespass uh, actions on the part of these uh, uh, big greens. And, and they have a lot to worry about also because sometimes their possession, their access to their own home or part of their home is uh, here and there being uh, uh, also uh, being rendered problematic because of the uh, uh, ill-conceived notions that uh, the, these big greens, OSI, Glenwood, and there are some others in the community, and I'll try to keep my temper back and not bring them up, but the simple fact of the matter is that so long as we all stick together, I believe that uh, these kinds of problems can be constructively resolved, which I hope will be the case, because if they're not constructively resolved, there are other ways that these issues can be uh, uh, dealt with that I think would cause, unfortunately, a lot of difficulty for uh, 
of, of OSI and Glenwood and other big greens that seem to think they can steamroll it through a community. And that has got to stop, and there is no better time to insist upon it than right now. Okay, thanks. <laughs>